things you should consider before starting your locks. A couple of these things apply to me directly and that was my experience. Things I wish I would have known. And the rest, I just think that you should consider. If you're watching this in December, up until the 21st, we have 35% off the holiday bundle. Get your loved ones the gift of lock maintenance. Now the first one, this is what I experienced myself. I wish that I knew that my parts should not have been the same all over my scalp. Why is that? Because our hair density is different throughout our scalp. For instance, this is the case for me and I'm sure this is the case for a lot of people. The hair along our hairline from the front to the back tends to be a bit thinner than the hair at our crown. And that's normal. But that also means that we may want to create larger parts along our hairline so that our locks come out more uniformed. And it's not just about uniformity. Sometimes when our locks are thinner along our hairline, it becomes concerning. We think that they're going to break off. We think that they're going to get like caught onto something and get snatched. And that's very possible. So it is a legit concern. So if you are starting out, Definitely consider if your hair is thinner along the hairline, which it most likely is because that's the case for most people all around our perimeter and make those parts a bit thicker or else you may have to combine your locks down the line. There's nothing wrong with that. I've combined several along the hairline. I started out with 120 locks and now I have 94 locks. So you do the math. I, that's how many locks I, I combined all along the hairline. Now this is something that I've spoken about with people in my life, but I've, I don't know if I spoke about it on social media much. And I don't think I've heard anybody else experience this, but I'm sure that some of you have experienced this. So I wish that I would have known that I would have recurring dreams about cutting my locks off, about combing my locks out about relaxing my hair and in those dreams which I've had for the past 13 years not like every night or anything like that once in a blue maybe a couple times a year but a couple times a year in 13 years is a long is a lot of dreams right and on those dreams I would feel feelings of regret I would feel feelings of like stress because my mentality was always oh I have to start over Oh, I have to grow my locks back out. Oh my gosh, why did I do that? Why did I do that? Now, I'm no dream interpreter, so I don't really know why I've had those dreams. But every time I would wake up, I would feel relief that my locks are still here. And the reason why I wish I would have known ahead of time was because earlier on when I was first having those dreams, it was freaking me out. Like, it made me feel like, what is, like... What is the message really telling me? Is it, are they telling me that I should cut off my locks? Are they telling me that I'm going to? Am I gonna neglect my journey? Like, am I, like, why am I having these dreams? And oftentimes, I don't think that it's worth investigating what our dreams are about. You know, you may disagree, but I personally don't think that most dreams are worth investigating. And um, I like to focus on the feeling that I have after the dream. And at the end of the day, I felt relief that my locks were still here. So that's all that really matters. Okay, this is another one that I personally experienced. So I am not saying that my locks cause headaches because they don't. My locks do not cause headaches. However, when I do have a headache, my locks do make it worse. And that's something that I experience as my locks have gotten much longer and even though I wouldn't classify my locks as heavy at all when my head hurts when I have a headache a migraine I can absolutely feel the weight of my hair and it's stressful it's a pain so with that knowledge I like to try to be as proactive as possible to prevent headaches because they're the worst so that's something to consider maybe you think that your locks are causing your headaches but maybe they're just exacerbating your headaches Okay, so now this is for you guys. This is not something I personally experienced because I wash my hair every two weeks, religiously, pretty much. But I must say that 
I want you all to know before you start your locks that you should really be clarifying your locks monthly. And when I say clarifying, I mean, I don't just mean shampooing. I mean using a clarifying shampoo. There's some shampoos that are clarifying. There's some shampoos that are moisturizing. I recommend once a month clarifying because that will help to prevent you from needing to do detoxes like apple cider vinegar soaks or dish soap soaks even. Even if you don't use heavy products, heavy ingredients on your locks, your locks will still accumulate buildup if you are not clarifying them regularly. If you want a clarifying shampoo recommendation, the Lock Detox Clarifying Shampoo by Love Light & Locks is a great one. It is a mild detox, so it's safe to use once a month. So if you are clarifying your hair monthly, if you are using lightweight products on your locks, then you may not need to do detoxes on your locks. You may not. I probably still would maybe once a year, twice a year maybe, but that's just me. You may not have to. And last but not least, when you are considering starting your locks, I want you to consider if you are the type that likes to keep a fresh retwist or if you are okay with it looking natural and loose at your roots. Why do you want to consider that? Is because the method of which you maintain your locks will come into play. If you retwist your hair, please know that retwists are not meant to stay glued until your next wash, until your next maintenance. Especially if you are only maintaining your locks once a month, once every six weeks, eight weeks, definitely not. Please don't expect your retwist to last that long. It's not going to, and it shouldn't. <laughs> but if keeping your roots maintained is such a priority to you, and you are only maintaining your locks every six to eight weeks or more, then I would recommend that you consider interlocking. Granted, interlocking shouldn't be done very frequently because you are running the risk of thinning your roots out. However, you are going to experience less frizz at the roots if you are interlocking. Now me personally, I like a sleek retwist, but I like to sleek it, if that makes sense. If I were to interlock my hair, I will probably only do it four times a year. And while it would look maintained, it wouldn't look sleek. Like this, this look only comes from fresh retwists or right after your interlocking. Like after a few weeks from your interlocking, it's not gonna look as sleek, right? That's something to consider. So that's it, those are five things I want you to consider before you start your locks. If you're watching this in December, up until the 21st, we have 35% off the holiday bundle. Get your loved ones the gift of lock maintenance with Love Light and Locks products. Thank you so much for watching. Love, Light and Locks.